How you doing guys? It's Ricky from Average E Skate Reviews, back with another video. Now, you've probably guessed by the title what this video is all about, and of course, we're gonna be building a four-wheel drive board. So this is gonna be video one of a three-part series. Video one, i.e. this one, is gonna be the parts. I'm gonna go through all the parts that we're gonna be using to build this board and assembling those together to give us the board ready for electrics. The second video is gonna be about all about wiring the board up, soldering all the connections together, and actually programming the board to get it to a state where it's rideable. And the third video is gonna be obviously me riding the board, testing it out, and seeing how I feel about four wheel drive, and letting you guys know my opinion on whether or not it's any good or not, and if it's something that you should consider doing yourselves. Also, if you've got any DIY related videos or boards that you'd maybe like me to build or any ideas, put them in the description down below because I'd really be interested in seeing what your ideas are, what your ideal board would be. But ultimately, if you could give me as many ideas as possible on future videos, that would be amazing. So let's just cover this now. Four wheel drive board, and the name of this board is gonna be the Predator 1.0. And I'll show you why it's gonna be called the Predator 1.0 in a little bit. It's gonna be something that we're gonna to get to that's really, really nice. So let's jump into the video, enough chit chat. Let's talk about the parts that we're gonna use for this board. So starting off with the deck itself, this is the Hummies deck. This is a lovely, lovely piece of, piece of woodwork, carbon fiber fiberglass inlay it's an absolutely stunning deck super super thick got a slight drop down either end of it really really wide about i think it's about 10 inches wide 40 inches long carbon fiber weave on the top there i've got something special to go on the bottom of this deck as well but it's routed out underneath and everything just an absolutely gorgeous deck now this deck is bi-directional i.e i mean that it doesn't really have a front and a back it can be either way around so it's whatever way you choose to make the front and the back it's a drop through deck so it'll accept all types of trucks really whether you want to go double kingpin single kingpin or even if you wanted to put some sort of crazy mounted board trucks on it you'd be able to do that so for the enclosure, I've gone for the 12S Universal Enclosure made by eBoosted. That's Alan over at eBoosted. If you are looking to get an enclosure for your board, make sure you go check this guy out. His enclosures are the best in the business, the best I've used. I've had a few enclosures from a few other different people, but the quality, craftsmanship, and just the whole way it feels, looks, and, and the durability of the whole enclosure itself, Alan from eBoosted by far does the best enclosures. Don't get me wrong, they're probably the most expensive enclosures that you can buy, but with Alan, you get what you pay for. He's not sponsoring this video, I just love his enclosures. I think what he does is awesome, so definitely go and check him out. So for the trucks on this board, we're gonna be going with Flip Sky's double kingpin trucks. They're 12 inches wide, um, and they will accept you know, the two-in-one conversion, so I'll be able to put the street setups on here, AT setups on here. With these double kingpin trunks, I'm not actually gonna be using the, the, the middle kingpin. I'm taking that completely out to make these into a single kingpin truck, and you're probably gonna to say to me, well, why didn't you just go and get a pair of single kingpin trucks and use those instead? Well, the reason is, is because of the angle of the kingpin on the double kingpin trucks, when you take that middle section out and make it into a single kingpin truck, it actually is a lot more carvy than a traditional sing single kingpin truck. It's a big, bit of a mouthful there, guys, sorry. So not only does it give you a great, great stability, especially with a four wheel drive board where stability is gonna be everything here. I don't wanna be using double kingpin trucks on a board that's got this much torque and power. It, you're gonna end up hurting yourself. It's just not gonna be a good idea. So the fact that I'm taking the middle kingpin out there, which is turning it into a single kingpin, it's gonna give me great stability, but I'm still gonna have that maneuverability that I'm looking for. Now, when it comes to the motor mounts, again, these are Flip Sky motor mounts, and the motor mounts I've particularly got here are the ones that have got the two different holes in it, so that you've got the different angle to be able to adjust the motor mounts so that the motors don't you know, hit the deck or hit the top of the truck. So if you're gonna be doing this and converting it into a single kingpin truck, i.e. make sure you're gonna have enough clearance on your deck, which luckily enough with the Hummies deck I do, but secondly, you wanna be making sure that you've got that adjustable motor mount again so that you, you do run into problems there you can adjust it which i've had to do on this deck in addition to these motor mounts being adjustable i'm also going to get them out on the belt sander i'm going to grind them down so that they've got like an al fresh brushed type aluminium look to them to really fit into the theme of the predator 1.0 board that i'm building here 
Now, talking about the motors, we're gonna be going for the 6354 motors. These are 2,450 watts or there is about, doesn't really mean a whole lot, but basically I'm gonna be able to run about 60 amps through each motor there, which again, compared to some motors, isn't a lot, but this is a four wheel drive board. So I've got not only the 260s on the back, but the 260s on the front there. That's gonna give me a plenty enough torque, plenty enough poke to, to get off the line for what I'm looking for. Maybe down the line, I might, depending on whether or not it's fast enough for me, upgrade it to the 6374s. That would then be ridiculously fast. So I'm hoping this motor setup is gonna be pretty good for this type of board anyway. But they're 140 kV. They're gonna give me a rough top speed of about 30 miles an hour, but they're gonna give me insane off the line and torque that I'm looking for. Now the wheels we're gonna be using on this board is gonna be the seven inch AT wheels. We're gonna be using the 66 tooth gear. And for the motors, we're gonna be using a 15 tooth gear. Now with these seven inch wheels, I am gonna grind these down um, just to give them like a, a brushed aluminium face to them, just for something a little bit different to help it fit in with the type of theme and style that I'm going for this board. Now for the grip tape design on the deck, I've gone with just a stripe either side down either edge with a standard black type grip tape, and I'm using our grip tape that we used with the hexagon type um, look to it in just the middle sections of the board there to help with a bit more grip and just to give it a, a nice little finishing touch look. Now with the deck as well, this is the thing I was gonna talk about, really gonna set this deck off, make it pop, make it look you know really, really nice. And that is the fact that I'm gonna be hydro dipping the bottom of this deck with a wrap with the Predator on it hence the board being called Predator 1.0. Now, this basically consists of rubbing it down, and I usually use a scotch Bright pad, red one. This rubs it down, doesn't leave any scratches in the surface, but keys it up enough to be able for the paint to adhere to the surface. Now, normally I would run over it with a primer, but I'm not gonna worry about it this time, and I'm gonna go straight in with some base coat. It's the bottom of the deck. It's not ever gonna come peel off. It'll be perfectly fine. Now before I start going in with some base coat, I am gonna prep the surface, i.e. I've already rubbed it down with the Scotch Bright. I'm gonna go over it with a bit of isopropyl alcohol just to get off any dust and remnants that's on there and degrease it. I'm also then gonna mask around the entire outside of the deck here. This is the most finickiest, most annoying part of the whole process, but once it's done, it's done. I'm gonna be using gaffer tape because it sticks really, really well, and the whole point of the gaffer tape on there really is so that I don't get any of the clear coat overspray onto the deck that I don't want it to, and also I don't get the dip, the, the film from the hydro dip going over and covering the edges of the deck, which I don't want. So once I've got that masked up, I'm gonna hit it with a bit of base coat, just a white base coat, because this film is predominantly black with some see-through areas. Now the see-through areas, they wanna pop, so I need to put some white under there to be able to see those. Once I've done that, I'm gonna fill the bath up and lay the film in position. Once that film's in the position, I'm gonna hit it with some activator, activate it, and dip the deck. Once the deck's dipped, it's gonna come out, it's gonna get rinsed off with some water. Once it's rinsed off, that's to basically to get rid of the film that's on there. The, the film itself is held together by like PVA glue. So when you put that in the water and you let that sit for a bit, the water dissolves the PVA glue, leaving just the ink on top. You go over it with the activator, which then activates that surface ready to be to stick to the part that you're dipping. Once that's done, I need to then, like I say, rinse off the film, get any more any of the PVA that's left over off of the, that surface there. Leave it to dry, and then I'm just gonna hit it with a few coats of satin top coat, just to finish it off and protect it. But it does look really, really nice. It sets the board off, it makes it pop, and that's what I love. I've done a few other decks and enclosures like this, so I'll stick a couple of photographs of those up as well, but I really, really like the look, and it just, yeah, it really sets the board off. So aesthetically wise, the last part that I'm gonna be adding to this board on the outside is the Davega. This is by far my favorite little accessory for boards because it's just got, you know, it's so full of features. It logs your rides, temperature, speed, estimates how much range you've got left in the board. There's, this whole, there could be a whole video just done on the Davia. There's so many little bits and pieces to it. Let me know if you'd like me to maybe go through the menus and show you what the Dave could, could, can do, should I say, because it is such a great piece of kit. And also, last thing, Flipski VX1, because I've got the Dave Guard that's got all the screen telemetry that I need to see at all times. I don't need to worry about having a remote with a screen on, plus I really, really like the Flipsky VX1. So jumping into what's gonna be powering this board. Now, I've already talked about the motors, 
but with this board being four wheel drive, we're gonna need two motor controllers. So I'm gonna go for two Foxbox tankers. They're both gonna be good for 150 amps continuous. That's plenty enough power that I'm gonna be drawing. I don't need any more than that for this particular build, and it's cheap, so that's why I've gone with that particular ESC. And then last but not least, we're gonna be going for a 12S4P battery. Now you're probably gonna think, wow, that's a bit small, but in theory, it's not gonna be much different, I don't think, and from the range that I'm currently getting with the 12S4 SP, just two wheel drive. Having those extra motors and that will definitely drain some of the power, but it will mean that the back motors won't have to work as hard as what the front motors do. So I think in terms of when it comes to range, I might get a slight drop in range, but I don't think it's gonna be as drastic as anybody thinks it's gonna be. And because obviously I'm gonna be using a fast charge on this board, I don't really mind having a little bit less range because I can just charge up quick as anything. So for me really, losing maybe a couple of miles, two, maybe three miles of range out of the whole board is no big deal to me because as soon as I charge it back up, it's not gonna take me long at all, which means I haven't really got to worry about the range too much. So that is it, that's the end of part one. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, the board's coming along pretty nicely now. Next episode is gonna be all about wiring it up and the electrics of the board, which is gonna be, yeah, it's gonna be a mission. It's gonna be frustrating maybe. I'm hoping it's gonna go smooth, but you just never know with these types of things. So thank you so much for watching. Again, ideas for DIY builds, or tell me what your ideal board would be down in the description below. I can't wait to see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching guys, take care and I will see you next time.